Reporting from Washington, here's David Asman. Sandy Berger met President Bill Clinton back in 1972 on George McGovern's presidential campaign. A Harvard Law grad, Berger later worked in President Jimmy Carter's State Department. Then he went into private practice. A decade later, he was one of the friends of Bill, who urged then Arkansas Governor Clinton to run for the White House. In President Clinton's first term, Sandy Berger held the key position of Deputy National Security Advisor. In the second term, Berger took the top job. He now is the latest official from the Clinton administration to be tarred by scandal. This isn't the first time someone from the Clinton administration has been caught playing fast and loose with secret or sensitive documents. White House Director of Personnel Craig Livingstone resigned in 1996 after he improperly handled almost a thousand confidential FBI files on Republicans. President Clinton pardoned former Defense Secretary and CIA Chief John Deutsch after Deutsch got caught taking classified documents home in his laptop. First Lady Hillary Clinton found herself under suspicion when her law firm's billing records under subpoena went missing. They later mysteriously appeared in the White House family quarters. As you'll see later, we've talked to investigators who wonder if Berger committed his crimes to cover up information that could damage the legacy of the Clinton administration. It wouldn't be the first time people may have taken a legal bullet for the Clintons. Susan McDougal went to jail rather than testify against the president in Whitewater and Assistant Attorney General Webb Hubble, after being convicted of tax evasion and fraud, famously remarked that he had to, quote, roll over one more time to protect the Clintons. But while the scandals were big news, history may judge that the most significant development of the Clinton years was the slowly escalating war waged on the United States by Islamic terrorists. And as National Security Advisor, Sandy Berger was right in the middle of that war. February 26, 1993. A failed first attempt to topple the World Trade Center with a truck bomb. Six dead. June 25, 1996. The bombing of the Kobar Towers residence in Saudi Arabia. 19 Americans killed. August 7, 1998. The American embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. 257 dead. The Osama bin Laden group uh, of terrorist organizations was responsible uh, for the bombing. Al-Qaeda, which was also behind the October 12, 2000 attack on the USS Cole in Aden, Yemen. 17 U.S. sailors dead. There was another attack that never happened. December 14, 1999, on the eve of the millennium, Ahmed Rassam, an Algerian national, was caught by an alert U.S. customs officer as Rassam entered the country from Canada. In his trunk, nitroglycerin and timing devices. Target? Los Angeles International Airport. We have no other credible information of, of uh, threats against particular targets in the United States. I think that we will, over the next few weeks, try to be as uh, clear with the American people as, as possible about what we know and what we don't know. To find out what they knew and didn't know, Berger directed White House terrorism advisor Richard Clark to draft a classified document which became known as the Millennium Alert After Action Review. In it, Clark set out the vulnerabilities faced by the United States and a series of recommendations for protecting America. What were they? Were they followed? We still don't know, because Clark's report remains one of the most highly classified documents in the possession of the United States government. But after Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 people on September 11, 2001, the nation needed, demanded, to know what went wrong. The first large-scale government investigation into 9-11 was the Graham-Goss Commission in Congress. Later, the bipartisan 9-11 Commission would be formed. To conduct these investigations, every highly classified White House document about Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda had to be reviewed. But only a small number of people had the security clearance to see them. President Clinton tapped Sandy Berger to be his sole representative to review his administration's top secret files. And Berger would take advantage of the stunning incompetence of the National Archives employees to steal and destroy some of the government's most sensitive top secret documents. For this crime, he would get away with a wrist slap. But there is much more to this story than has ever been revealed. <laughs>